Hello everyone, myself Dr. Parth Goswami and today I am going to teach you about infarction and its implication in the health. This is the most important topic from the hemodynamics point of view. Alright, you know two competencies will be covered in this lecture. It comes under the competency number 6.6 .6 and 6.7. In the 6.6 .6 competency, a student needs to define and describe the infarction, its type, etiology, morphological features and clinical effect. In the competency 6.7, it include identify and describe the gross and microscopic feature of infarction in the pathological specimen. So learning objective for the today's topic is to understand the definition of infarction, then etiology, then types of infarct, morphology and we will see MCQ at the end of our lecture. MCQ quiz is also available in the course, right? But uh, we will discuss 2 to 3 MCQ as well. Alright. So first of all, definition. What is the meaning of infarction? So the infarction is simply a ischemic coagulative necrosis, right? So it is the necrosis due to ischemia, right? Now, why ischemia? So it is commonly due to arterial occlusion, right? But sometime, you know, Venous occlusion also can be responsible for development of infarction. But in most of the case, it is due to arterial occlusion which lead to white infarct. So the infarction means a death of tissue, coagulative necrosis in a tissue due to lack of blood supply, right? Ischemia means lack of blood supply. And the common cause of lack of blood supply or the ischemia is occlusion by thrombosis. Right? Sometimes it could be due to embolism. So thromboembolism is a common cause of occlusion and the lack of blood supply in an organ which will lead to coagulative necrosis because of less blood supply. All right. And we know very well that because of lack of blood supply, why coagulative necrosis occur? We have discussed about the mechanism of cell injury, coagulative necrosis in the detail in our cell injury chapter, right? All right. So these are the common organs that can be involved in an infarction, right? See, brain, you know, in the brain, the infarction is known by the name cerebral infarction, right? In the retina, it is known by the name retinal infarction. In the lung, it is known by the name lung infarct or pulmonary infarct. In the heart, it is known by the name myocardial infarction. In the spleen, it is known by the name splenic infarct, right? In the liver, it is known by the name hepatic infarction. In the bowel, it is known by the name bowel obstruction or intestinal infarction, right? And in the kidney, it is known by the name renal infarction right and in the extremity there could be gangrene and the development of infarction so these are the common organ involved in the infarction among which in few organ pale infarct is seen and in the few organs sometimes red infarction is seen we will see in the detail in which organ which type of infarct is seen in our subsequent slide all right so which are the types or the classification of infarction so the classification of infarction is according to the color according to the age of infarct and according to presence or absence of infection so first, according to the color, the infarction can be divided into two variety that is white infarction and red infarction. This is commonly used classification for infarction, right? White or red. White color is because of ischemia, right? It's due to the ischemia in the arterial occlusion. It's commonly seen in artery. Due to arterial occlusion, there will be ischemia and there will be development of white infarction, right? And the red infarction is commonly seen due to venous occlusion. Ischemia by venous occlusion, right? So it is a red color. That's why the name red is given. And here the infarction is white color. That's why white color, white infarct name is given, right? White infarction is because of arterial occlusion and the red infarction is because of venous occlusion. This is the most important MCQ. Don't forget it. All right. According to the age of infarct, right, it could be, uh, you know, old infarct or we can say healed infarct or it could be recent one, right, all right. According to the presence or absence of infection, it can be divided into two variety. If it is infected, then it is septic infarct and if it is, you know, without infection, then it is known by the name blend infarction, 
so these are the three group of classification of infarction according to different criteria commonly used one is white or red infarct so let's understand in the detail what is the white infarct all right so white infarction is commonly seen due to arterial occlusion understand it is due to occlusion in the artery and the common cause of arterial occlusion is thromboembolism right thrombosis or embolism in the 99% case arterial occlusion is because of thrombosis or embolism so it is seen in end arterial blood supplied organ understand it is seen in organ where there is a end arterial supply means it is only having the supply by one artery there is no dual supply right so it is seen in solid organ it is seen in solid organ the coagulative necrosis is also seen in solid organ right so it is seen in heart that is known by the name myocardial infarction then in the kidney which is known by the name renal infarction and in the spleen which is known by the name splenic infarction so these three organs show a white infarction now you might have question why white infarction occur in solid organ because the solid organ is having only single blood supply that is by the end artery so if the blood supply is not there right then that organ will not get blood supply from any other collateral branch right so that is one reason and the second reason is that you know in the solid organ the tissue is solid right so what happen there will be no diffusion of blood there is no diffusion or the seepage of blood into the necrotic area from surrounding tissue from surrounding tissue right so there will be no diffusion of blood into the necrotic area from surrounding tissue because the tissue is solid and you know as it is seen in solid organ you know there will be coagulative type of necrosis there will be coagulative type of necrosis predominantly in white infarction right and the edema is usually absent and most of the solid organ particularly kidney will show a wedge shape infarction we will discuss it in a morphology right it show a wedge shape infarct now let's talk about a red infarction so you know the name itself suggests you know here there will be congestion in the infarcted area it's not pale it's not a white color right like that of a pale infarct here the color of the affected tissue is red you know there will be a red congestion in the organ and you know it is seen in organ where there is a dual blood supply where there is a dual blood supply like that of you know liver you know small intestine and lung you know it can be seen in a organ where where there is only a loose tissue right where the tissue is loose the loose tissue in our body is seen mainly in the lung and you know because of loose tissue there can be easily diffusion of the blood from surrounding area into the infarcted area right there will be easy seepage of blood easy diffusion of blood which is not present in pale infarct right all right it can be seen because of venous occlusion mainly it is seen in venous occlusion not in arterial occlusion right and the common example is ovary due to venous occlusion all right so the common example is where the red infarction is seen are liver small intestine lung and the ovarian infarction this organ will show a red infarction you know and the edema will be present edema is commonly seen in the red infarction right all right now let's see the morphology of infarction in a different organ right so this particular diagram demonstrate a lung infarction and splenic infarction right see this is the lung infarction it is a red color you know it's a hemorrhagic infarct so as we have discussed the lung is loose tissue and having the dual blood supply that's why the red infarction is seen in lung infarction you know there can be easy diffusion of blood into the lung because it is a loose tissue right but on the opposite side on a contrasting side see on the right side we have the splenic infarct which is a solid organ right so here there will be pale infarction white infarct see this is the white infarct right 
so in the spleen like solid organ pell infarction is seen and that is because you know because of the solid density of the tissue the blood cannot get diffuse and it is having the end arterial single blood supply right that's why pell infarction is seen all right second image from the robins that demonstrate a kidney infarction that is known by the name renal infarction right so see this is the gross changes in the renal infarction this is the gross appearance right the infarction is pale in color and you can see that infarction is a wedge shape triangular infarction see this is the wedge shape infarction you know in this wedge shape infarction apex is made up of occluded artery occluded vessel right and while the base is formed by periphery of the organ the base is formed by periphery of the organ and the apex is made up of occluded vessel right and if you do the microscopy of such a white infarct then it is similarly show a microscopy like that of coagulative necrosis see this is the necros tubule right this all are the necros tubule necros tubule you know it is without nucleus see it is without nucleus it is pink color coagulative necrosis is pink color and without necrosis right so that that is the coagulative necrosis and particularly such type of infarct because of coagulative necrosis will show a neutrophilic infiltrate right initially for the 1 to 2 day there will be neutrophilic infiltration which gradually replaced by chronic inflammatory cell that is macrophage and they will remove the necrotic tissue so that is the complete fate of coagulative necrosis right all right and friends remember that you know in the liver both type of necrosis is seen that is uh, that is pale as well as red infarct right all right because it is solid organ and as well as having the dual blood supply that's why all two type of infarction seen in liver infarction all right now let's discuss about some of the mcq a white infarct seen in all organ except heart kidney lung or spleen so white infarct is seen in a solid organ right so the kidney heart and the spleen are the solid organ so white infarct seen in these three organ but lung is a loose tissue right it's not a solid organ so in the lung there will be red infarct so the exception is lung infarct right all right 35 year male 35 year male presented with a left side abdominal pain on ct contrast kidney shows the following changes seen by the arterial occlusion identify the pathology so here this is a triangular area right it's a wedge shape a white area and the patient presented with pain in the infarction pain can be seen so obviously this is a infarction right white colored triangular area in the kidney is infarction and in the solid organ pale infarction is seen right so the answer would be pale infarction white infarction all right in organ with dual blood supply which type of infarction is seen commonly red infarct understand in the organ with dual blood supply there will be red infarction because you know if if there is a development of infarction from one blood supply blockage right then the other blood supply collateral blood supply can provide the blood to the infarcted area right so in the dual blood supply there will be congestion and there will be red infarction right all right so that's all about the very short tutorial on infarction it's a most important short note as well as mcqs can be asked from this particular small topic right i hope your fundamentals will be clear about the infarction after watching this video so thank you very much and i will be right back with some interesting new video Till then, take care and bye-bye, friends.